What's up, everybody? It's Butch from Southeast Cichlids. <clears throat> to show you guys some new fish that we just got in. It's pretty exciting. Uh, we got <clears throat> fish in direct from Africa, uh, from Lake Tanganyika, and uh, it's the first time I've done this um, in uh, probably ten, close to ten years, direct import from Africa, and uh, for lots of lots of different reasons. Um, but uh, the good news is uh, we're, we're going to do this a lot more. Um, so we'll start here. Uh, we've got some uh, Trophius Icola. Uh, there's not many of these. And I'm not sure the ratio. I haven't checked them. Um, but if you want some Icola, let me know. Uh, I don't think I'm going to put them on the list. Uh, and then these are... Uh, Petrochromus <clears throat> Chuavase Moliro. Yeah, Moliro. Um, this particular Petrochromus is uh, very peaceful and calm uh, compared to most of all of your other Petrochromus. Uh, this is what I would call a, a great <clears throat> beginner Petrochromus for anyone who is wanting to keep Petrochromus. They also mix really well with Trophius, or these particular Petrochromus do. Uh, they don't get super big like a lot of your other Petrochromus. Uh, they stay on the smaller side. And their colors are, are it's really cool. Uh, they have the spots. Uh, it's kind of a dark black chocolate body with uh, the spots. Really nice fins. And this is a very female heavy group. Um, if I remember correctly, it might be five males and 15 females or something like that. Um, I'll, I'll list them. Uh, it would be a nice group for someone looking to get into Petrochromis or someone wanting to add <clears throat> another fish to their Trophius tank. Uh, Trophius Kasanga Red Rainbow. Really, really nice. Uh, super big and healthy. Uh, they're eating really, really well. And their colors are just really, really bright and nice. I remember a long time ago, I got in my first group of wild caught red rainbow, and it was, it blew my mind. I couldn't stop looking at them. Um, and at that time, I was blown away and, and thought it was the craziest fish I'd ever seen. Really, really nice. Um, and for anyone you know watching that is not familiar with Trophius, uh, these you know these don't go with your Malawi fish. <clears throat> these guys do uh, best in, in larger groups in colonies. Um, you know you want to keep them in trios, one male to three female, uh, 75 gallon tank minimum, uh, and you'd want to do like five male, ten female, for example. Um, in, a, in a six foot 125, uh, the idea would be 10 male, 20 female. Uh, these fish will spawn in the tank. It's very, very entertaining to watch. Um, they're always active. And uh, for the most part, they do not eat their fry. They will uh, spit the fry in the tank 
and in most cases will not eat the fry and the fry will grow up in the tank with them it's it's pretty cool uh, so anyways we got a, a lot of really nice red rainbow another tank of red rainbow uh, down here Trophius, Bulu Point, also known as Cherry Spots. Super nice. Uh, as you can see, the the cherry spots are uh, very pronounced and bright. Really nice wild caught trophies. Another tank full of the cherry spots. And it's a lot of fun getting in uh, direct from Africa shipments. Not not so much fun logistically and uh, the stress and worry and the expense uh, to get the fish here. Uh, but once they get here and you get them settled, uh, it's just, it's so different um, for me. Uh, especially, you know, getting the German uh, fish in like we always do and they're always really, really Malawi heavy because that's uh, what most people want. Um, and the wild caught fish from Germany, uh, the Tanganyikan fish, I think we can all agree, are super duper expensive and, and that's because the fish have to go from Africa to Germany and then I have to get them here from Germany. So it's like you're paying shipping twice and exchange rates and all that good stuff. So that has made <clears throat> the Tanganyikan wild caught on the German list, uh, you know, pretty much out of everyone's reach. And, and I've known that, understood that, and wanted to do something about it for a long time. And um, uh, I finally got uh, a comfortable uh, situation uh, in Africa uh, where I'm gonna be able to get these fish in on a regular basis. So really excited about it. These are uh, Trophius Brichardi Carliani. A real nice, um, you know, not a super flashy Trophius, uh, but the, the black and yellow uh, is really cool. A lot of variation, you know, some have yellow dorsals, some don't. Um, so there's some variation in them, and, and that to me makes them uh, unique. I always uh, like fish with variation. More of the Richard I. Carliani. And all these trophies uh, guys will be sold in trios one male to two female ratios and in some cases there will be extra females uh, you know I believe uh, there are extra females in these groups I have not uh, vented them yet uh, don't want to handle them you know when they first get here uh, you know go by what your exporter tells you he's sending you and uh, I have gone through and sorted and vented the fronto so that we're going to take a look at it in a minute and all those ratios were dead on what they were supposed to be um, extremely female heavy so I suspect that these trophies are as well <clears throat> but to be on the safe side we're going to do one male to two female ratios um, you know if someone wants a, a large female heavy group uh, you know, let me know and I will sort them and vent them uh, and know, you know, what we can do. But I, I suspect there will be better than one to two female, two 
one to two female <clears throat> ratios should be good. Just let me know what you're looking for, what you like. One more group of uh, Trophius. Uh, these are Bouchardi Capilli. Um, again, uh, these aren't one of your more flashy Trophius, but uh, their markings are cool. You know, they got uh, really neat stripes uh, with that intense yellow in between the bars. Really nice little group there. Uh, these are Autolamprologus Compressicep, Goldhead Kasanga, um, and I've you know never gotten uh, even when I was importing direct from the lake 10, 12 years ago. Um, <clears throat> you know I would sometimes get larger Compressicep's like this, but you know if you got a box of 40. Um, you know, you might have 10 uh, this size, and, and uh, I, all of them that came in are, are big like this. Uh, the males are super nice and big, uh, you know, four and a half inch. Uh, if you know compressiceps, um, you know how long it takes for them to get this size, um, which is why tank raised compressiceps. Are, are great uh, but it takes forever for them to get to this size so if you're wanting <clears throat> you know instant uh, compresses up action in your tank oh uh, we've we got them I mean these things are big uh, heads are uh, nice and gold they're not like full-blown gold right now I mean these fish have only been here a week and a half uh, it was a rough trip um, but these guys are looking really really good uh, never got compressor steps uh, this large and nice overall across the board of, of what came in super impressive fish Uh, these are uh, Compressicep uh, Kasanga Redfin. Um, uh, they're good size as well. Uh, they're not really showing a whole lot of color. Uh, but I can tell you when they came in, they had a, a nice yellowish uh, body with really nice orangey fins. And I'm sure... Uh, once in a tank with some sand and, and, and good hiding places, uh, they would probably pop just like they were when they came in. These are <clears throat> Lamprologus Brevis Sebuisa. And uh, getting a wild caught Shelly's like this is. Um, rare not because uh, the fish are uh, endangered or in low numbers or, uh, it's actually the opposite there's tons of them in the lake uh, but it, they live in shells so when the divers go to catch them uh, of course they go to the shell and uh, so basically the divers take the shells up to the boat and uh, they just sit there cracking shells for hours to get the fish out of them. Uh, so it's a lot of work to do it. So that's why you don't really see them uh, offered wild caught very often. Um, so I was pretty stoked to get these. Nice, nice little brevis. Super cool. Uh, these are more of the uh, gold head compressor set. Nice male in there. Um, several females in this tank. The females are really nice too. 
did get some wild caught tricotti. They're probably not going to cooperate. Pretty skittish fish. I hope to get a lot more of these next time. Uh, these are Petrochromis Moshi Sabuisa. Uh, I had a, a 23, 24 of these came in. And uh, one of my customers, you know, I was kind of letting him know that these were coming. And uh, once they got here, showed him a couple pictures and he scooped all of them. So that worked out really well. And they're crazy yellow. As you can see that male. All right, up here. Uh, these are Frontosa Capilli Blue. Years ago, even before I got into actual fish business, I bred fish in my spare bedroom and sold the babies on eBay. I started out doing that with peacocks and I always really, really liked Frontosa and I got a wild group of Capilli Blue Frontosa. This was probably in 2003. Um, and it was my first wild group of Tanganyikans, uh, the first group of Frontosa. And I bred them, and they produced hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of babies for me over the uh, few years that I sold on eBay um, and Aquabid. Uh, and the Frontosa in the logo, SEC logo, <clears throat> was actually of uh, taken from a picture of that uh, breeder Kapili male that I had uh, all those years ago. Um, so uh, I guess enough with the sentimental story. Uh, but uh, these are Kapili Blue Frontosa and um, really, really nice. Um, with great ratios, uh, I've got uh, several big, uh, what I call bull male, to go with the females. Um, if you never kept Frontosa before, uh, typically when you get wild caught Frontosa, uh, they usually all come in in this size, like what you see here in the front. Um, uh, due to the shipping, you know, uh, the the freight, the cost. Uh, to get them all the way over here and the success rate of them living uh, so typically what you get are the medium sized four to five inch uh, the females at that size are good to go for breeding but uh, the male has to get about seven inches and start getting the hump uh, before they're ready to breed uh, so I was fortunate enough to uh, be able to, to swing, uh, getting some of the big boys in. Um, and you know, that guy, there's two of them in the back. Uh, you know, that one's probably 10 inch and, and that one's probably eight, eight and a half uh, in the back back there. But their blue is really, really, really good. Really nice. So those are Kapili Blue Frontosa. These are Timboy Frontosa. And I think that the skylight is probably not going to help us with these, uh, but they are super nice, very dark. Uh, you really can't see how dark, and when I say dark, I mean the color blue. Uh, Timboy is in the Congo. Um, anyone who's new to Frontosa or wanting to get into Frontosa, uh, the deepest, richest blues uh, 
live in the Congo. Timbwe, Moba, Katumba, Maliro, Kapampa. So you really can't go wrong with any Frontosa from the Congo. Uh, the old school terminology for this is Zaire Blue. Uh, because all of the Frontosa in that region are very, very deep, nice blue. So these come from Timbwe. And again, just really, really nice. Uh, a couple big, nice males in here as well. This is another tank of the Frontosa Capilli. I have um, great, great, great ratios of these guys. If anyone is looking for a female heavy group of Frontosa for their tank, um, we can do it with the Capilli, uh, you know, with a couple, one or two of those great big males and a male to eight females probably. Uh, something like that. We, we have that many extra females um, to go with uh, the extra large males. Down here, uh, another group from the Congo. Uh, these are Katumba. And uh, again, just really, 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 really nice. Um, the color, it's so deep, the blue. almost not purple purple but it's it's deep you know it's uh, kind of looks purpley and frontosa guys will know this uh, if you're not a frontosa guy just looking to get into frontosa um, uh, these are a very deep water fish uh, so they like a darker environment of course they will acclimate well to the tank environment um, but uh, your substrate choice if you go with a lighter substrate like what you see here uh, typically the fish will be a little brighter blue and if you had black substrate in the tank um, they get uh, dark kind of even more purpley uh, so you can you know look online uh, even I think I have some old pictures and videos out there uh, showing the difference of how they look on the different color sands but um, I mean don't get me wrong they look great on either one uh, but it's just an idea uh, for your aquascape if you're going to keep Frontosa uh, the, the color of the sand will play a part in how they look and uh, that's kind of true for for most all of your fish African cichlids at least Anyways, guys, a lot of nice Frontosa, a lot of nice Trophius. Super excited. We will have another direct from Tanganyika import within a month. And a direct from Malawi within the month as well. So, uh, just stay plugged in, and until next time, we'll see you later.